Our goal with the Revit Loads Toolkit is to allow you to calculate complete and accurate load calculations with a single click of a button. All that is required is that the architect has rooms placed. If rooms are placed, that means the building envelope is defined well enough to contain spaces, and you are ready to try the Ripple Loads Toolkit. In order to set up the project to run loads, first link in the architectural model. Then set it as room bounding. If there is a furniture model that is separate from the architectural model, link that in as well. Next, acquire coordinates from the architect's model. Check that your location and orientation are correct, and, if necessary, make any adjustments to the weather data and clearness number. Ensure you have levels that are aligned with the architect's levels. Your spaces will need to be bounded by the same elements as the architect's rooms, and if the levels aren't aligned, the bounding elements will not work properly. If your firm uses separate mechanical and electrical models, and you would like to use the actual electrical data for loads, you will need to link in the electrical model, and copy monitor in the light fixtures, and the electrical fixtures category. This will allow you to pull the electrical data from the actual electrical elements into your space load. The settings that affect the load calculations are scattered throughout a few different dialogues. In order to simplify project setup, we have made the set recommended settings button. Click this button and the recommended settings will be applied to the project. The recommended settings can be viewed by hovering over the button and clicking F1. The hardest setting to estimate is the ground level, so check that it is correct. Anything under the ground level will be assumed to have ground contact, and no contact with the air or solar loads. Run the rooms to spaces button. This button will place a space in all rooms, and copy over room name and number to the space. It will raise the space height up to the highest ceiling, floor, or roof, above the space, and place a plenum space as necessary. Spaces should now encompass the entire volume of the conditioned building. Because they fill up the entire volume, they now contain the essential data about all of the bounding elements, and can be used to calculate loads. In addition to the spaces now encompassing the entire envelope, they will also contain the lights that are typically above the space, this helps with internal load calculations. This button can be run multiple times throughout the project as rooms are added, or room names and numbers are updated. It will only add new spaces, and update room names and numbers as necessary. Run the Assign Occupancy Category button. This function will attempt to assign an ASHRAE 62.1 Occupancy Category, based on the room name, area, and other parameters. Review the LTK Space Load Schedule and check the space type parameter to assign spaces that were unable to be assigned, or assigned incorrectly. Review and modify the desired cooling mode space temperature set points, and heating mode space temperature set point as necessary. Finally, review the default internal loads for the space type selections. These can be modified as you see fit. Run the internal loads button. This button will compare the actual internal load values with the space type default values, and, if the actual internal loads are at least 75% of the space type default, it will use the actual value by setting the base load on parameter to actual. If you would like to input your own load in for these values, change the respective base load on parameter to specified load values, and then you can type in whatever value you would like. By default, Revit has no actual people count for spaces. The internal loads assistant button attempts to count the amount of people in the space, by examining all of the furniture in the space, and adding up all of the seats, to get a people count. Just like with power and lighting, if that count is at least 75% of what was expected, it will set the occupancy unit to, number of people, and insert the counted number of people. Regardless, the number will be added to the counted number of seats by furniture in linked models parameter. Now that internal loads are addressed, we'll look at external loads. There are two ways that Revit passes the thermal properties of building elements into a GBXML, or the internal loads tool. 
one way is to override the thermal properties of the element category, and the other way, is to use the actual thermal properties defined in the element. Because architects are generally not good at defining thermal properties, we highly recommend that you override everywhere that you can, and then only check and fix the architect's elements where absolutely necessary. With the proliferation of the adoption of the International Energy Code, the thermal properties of building assemblies are beginning to consolidate. A code minimum assembly has a much better thermal performance than traditional assemblies, and going much above code minimum, only gives you quickly diminishing returns. For this reason, most architects are just barely meeting code. This makes running loads much easier. For projects like these, the Ripple Loads Toolkit includes all of the 2018 International Energy Code construction types, pre-built for assignment. The Set Code Minimum Construction Types button sets your building default, to the Code Minimum Thermal Properties, for the Project Zone. The Project Zone and Construction Types can be changed as necessary. Thermal Properties can also be overridden on a space-by-space -space basis. For example, if you have an addition to an existing building, and the addition will be Code Minimum, but the existing building will be something less than that, you can create a new construction type, set the override thermal properties appropriately, and then assign it to the construction type space parameter of all the spaces in the existing building. When overriding architectural elements, you are limited to the constructions found in your constructions.xml file located on your computer. The Ripple Loads Toolkit allows you to view this file, to review the assumptions that Autodesk made when creating the default constructions. It also allows you to add new materials, constructions, and windows. Click the Constructions Manager button, and a user interface will pop up displaying the information. The materials contain an R value, and may contain information that accounts for thermal mass. To add a new material, pick a unique name, an R value, and include thickness, density, and specific heat, if you would like to account for the thermal mass of the material. Finally, click Add. That material will now be visible in the library, and available to assign to a construction. The constructions are composed of a set of materials. These materials can be viewed in the library by expanding the construction. To add a new construction, pick a unique name, and a list of materials that composes the construction. Check the types, and click Add. The windows and skylights are defined by an R value, solar heat gain coefficients at different angles, and visible transmittance. Enter these values, check the types, and click Add. Your new custom constructions will now be available in the Construction Types dialog. When overriding architectural elements, you can only select one set of thermal properties for each category. This selection overrides every element of that category in the space. This only becomes a problem when a single space has two different construction types. If the thermal properties are close enough, it may be practical to pick the worst thermal properties, and apply those to the whole space. This will give you slightly conservative load calculations, but will save you a lot of time. If the thermal properties are drastically different, you have to correct the actual architectural elements in the architectural model. If it is a single space with a single type that needs to be overridden, this may be easy to do manually, but as the spaces or types grow we need a tool to help us pinpoint the constructions that need to be corrected. This is what the Architectural Element Finder button is for. If you would like to pinpoint elements whose thermal properties will actively be used in load calculations, check the Find Active Elements Only button and hit Find Elements. The lists below will give you a list of materials, constructions, and openings that are not overridden, and will need to have the correct thermal properties applied before accurate loads can be attained. You can also review the architect's assumptions for the materials. If you would like to view all of the materials and constructions that are bounding the space, check the Find All Elements button, and hit Find Elements. This will give you a list of all materials, constructions, 
and openings, whether they have been overridden or not. This may be helpful if there are many different constructions on the project that can't be overridden. Many times architects will get the materials and dimensions correct in their constructions, but will leave out the thermal properties. It may just be a matter of correcting a few materials to get all of the construction's thermal properties correct. However, architects typically have thousands of materials in their libraries. This tool allows you to pinpoint what needs to be corrected. You are now ready to either export a GBXML file, or use the built-in Revit Loads engine to calculate heating and cooling loads. We highly suggest using the Revit built-in Loads engine, it has been shown to be accurate if the entire space envelope is encompassed. The Revit export works well, however, we have found that all of the third-party engines do a poor job of importing, and you will be stuck manually aligning the data with the third-party software standards. To export a GBXML file, go to a 3D view, File, Export, GBXML. To run loads using the Revit built-in loads engine, go to Analyze, Heating and Cooling Loads, then click Calculate. The recommended settings are already set from the Set Recommended Settings button. The loads engine will populate your calculated cooling load and calculated heating load parameter for each space. The loads engine will also populate your specified supply airflow parameter. But, for a variety of reasons, this airflow parameter will be incorrect, and not rounded. You can look at the LTK space airflow schedule to calculate an accurate CFM. Modify your cooling mode supply air temperature parameter as necessary. You can select all spaces in the schedule, then click your default 3D view, and then change the parameter for all spaces selected in the properties window. You can then round, and copy this number to the specified supply airflow parameter by clicking the round and assign override CFM button. It will also set a minimum CFM so that you don't end up with something below what can be balanced. Each button is designed to break up the process so that a person can review it at each step of the way. However, after a few runs, when you are comfortable with the space type defaults, and if you have good and consistent architects, you should be able to calculate loads at a single click of a button. That is what the shoot the moon button is for. This button essentially hits all the buttons at once. Placing full spaces, assigning occupancy categories, reviewing internal loads, setting code minimum construction types, running loads, and rounding and assigning supply air CFM, all at once. We'd like to get you to a point where you can hit shoot the moon, grab a coffee, come back, and start designing the project with accurate CFMs assigned to every space.